What is up, guys, and welcome to this special episode of Guarani Vision, the first ever podcast dedicated to Paraguayan football in English. As always, I'm Roberto Rojas, and joining me as always are Federico Perez, Maria Britos, and Ralph Hanna. And guys, it's international season. You know, it's finally June. It's summer here, at least in the United States. Sorry, Fede, it's winter over there for you guys. But in any case, you know, we have international football going on. Obviously, we're talking on the day that the European Championships are going on right now. But we do have another tournament that's going to be starting in about a couple of days. On Sunday, the Copa America in Brazil. We'll obviously be talking about what's going to be happening for Paraguay as they battle out four different teams to, to basically challenge for a Copa America title, their first one since 1979. And obviously, a lot to talk about after what we've seen from the World Cup qualifiers against Uruguay and Brazil. I'm excited. I'm sure you guys are excited. So let's get straight into it. Let's go all the way to the motherland. Fede, how are you, man? I shouldn't say that it's winter there because how cold does it usually get in Paraguay anyway during this time? Like what, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 10 Celsius. So it's it's pretty normal, basically. We have this, we could probably have the same temperature at this point. Yeah, I don't get the snow you get in Connecticut in your winter, but hey, I, I got my heater on right now and it's about four or five uh, o'clock right here. So uh, it is kind of chilly, actually. June, July usually are the months that get uh, we get the lower temperatures. So you got to be ready. You got to have your, your long sleeves on. You got to have a sweater just in case. Hand it over there, especially when the sun gets out of you because the sun is pretty strong over here. So as long as you keep yourself on the sun side, and you don't have that much trouble here during winter. I'm, I'm good, Roberto, you know, just trying to get over these last two couple of games of the national team of the Aldo Roja. It hasn't been easy. We talked about this in the preview. Um, I, I was going to be content. I, I was going to be happy if we made two points. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to push the guys a little bit more. I wanted to see a win out of these two games. We did not get that. We didn't get much attack. We, we got way too defensive with Beriso style, our head coach. So shame on Beriso, shame on our coach. We'll talk about what happened on these two games. What's coming up for Copa America after the, the Brazilian game, after with the loss against Brazil, uh, everybody was talking here, is Beriso still going to uh, go on? Is he still going to be our coach? And well, the FA has confirmed him. So now we can talk. We have the list of the players that are going to go to Copa America. We're already thinking about the games we're trying to get over the ones that just happened but we're obviously going to talk about them and think about what's going to happen with against Bolivia Argentina Uruguay and Chile the teams that we have to face up against in this really weird Copa America that's going to be going on in Brazil after everything that happened on the preview right it had it was supposed to be played in other countries but it will finally be played in Brazil and we'll talk about the logistics also what's Paraguay going to do are they going to only going to be in Brazil are they going to come back to Paraguay how are they going to move around in these games that are going to come up well uh, that preview of the Copa America is here in Guarani Vision Absolutely. And let's go straight to Miami. Let's go to Maria first, because I think after what we saw in these World Cup qualifiers, I think this Copa America that's coming up kind of provides a crossroads of what's going to happen, because I think, you know, it's different than what we saw in Brazil two years ago when Beriza was starting off as a coach. Qualifiers are about to happen in a few months now, but now, you know, everything's getting mixed up. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, even what you're seeing on Twitter, from the media, from everywhere, it's now or never for Redizo, and he has to convince his team, and he has to convince everyone because there's a lot of people that are not convinced by him at all. No, you're you're right, um, Roberto, and it's been piling up for for a couple of, of games now for for Redizo. Um, but hi everyone, I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and I hope we are all excited for the Copa America that's starting up now this week. And, you know, I got, I got the Euros here, right here on my side, watching a little bit. Um, it's a very exciting time. Um, maybe not so exciting for Barry. So, you know, he has had a couple of rough games. Um, not so much for, for the one versus uh, Uruguay, but for Brazil, although it was a little expected that they might lose, uh, we didn't expect them to play this bad the way that, that they did. Um, but... Yeah, it's uh, now or never for, for him, and hopefully he makes better decisions this time. He's got a big test coming up, and the Copa America is always a competition that Paraguay does uh, fairly well. So, um, you know, they're, they need to either win this or at least get to uh, far, far enough in the competition that they would uh, save, it would save Berizzo. Winning. Wow. That's a huge, bold take, Marie. I mean, hey, you got to go for glory. I mean, and, and Ralph, I'll go to you on this one because 
Yeah, like she said, I, I think this Copa America, historically Paraguay have done very, very well. So you would think that such a tournament could indeed, you know, provide a bit of more, you know, confidence into the side from fans out there. But I think they want to see more than just to get results. I think they really want to see a lot of factors going on. So it's a huge Copa América for a lot of these players and, of course, for Eduardo Berizzo. Yeah, it's a, it's a big test coming up. Hi, everybody. Changed my background today. Got the, there we go, got the map in the background. Uh, in, you know, so we can have a look at Brazil and, and where the team are traveling to. Um, but yeah, big Big test, like you said, I think it, I think the performances are very important here because even though we say Paraguay do well in the Copa America, they don't really win many games, actually. They, they seem to draw a lot and they tie a lot, but that, that works in the sense that that's got them to the final in 2011. They've, they've got, you know, had deep runs in 2015, 2016. This tournament, they will surely qualify. Well, okay, not surely, but they really should qualify for the quarterfinals because of the way this is set up. It's... Is two groups of five. The top four go through from each group. So unless they finish below Bolivia in their group, they they would qualify for the quarterfinals. And then from there, I guess you know anything can kind of happen, as we've seen in the past. They they've beaten Brazil recently twice on on penalties. They they lost to Brazil last time on penalties. You know, it's uh, they're they're always kind of there and thereabouts. So. Um, so we you know we can we can think they might do well, but like you say more than results is kind of performance because what we're worried about with Paraguay is this was a team that was scoring goals but had problems defending. Now it's become a team that got better defensively but's having problems scoring. So it's like, where's the balance? Where's this team going to really click? And, and why is Berisa still tinkering with teams? You know, we'll talk about it more, but, you know, he's playing players out of position. He's starting games really badly. Of his 10 competitive games, Paraguay have only been leading at halftime three times. So he's really struggling to get that right team to start. And then often his changes, the team starts to look better, but he needs to get it right from the, from the beginning. So like, with, like you guys are talking about, lots of pressure on Berry. So I think that he has these guaranteed four games in the group, probably five games will at least get a quarterfinal, we think. So it's five games to really get that team working and showing that he knows how to get the best out of this group of players. 100%. And let's go straight into what we saw over the last two games. Obviously, the nil-nil draw against Uruguay in Montevideo. A positive result, given the fact that our record in Uruguay is not as good. So obviously, coming out of that with just a point. But a couple of days later, at the Defensores del Chaco, we saw a 35-year streak end with Brazil defeating Paraguay 2-0 thanks to goals from Neymar and Lucas Paqueta. Fede, I'll go to you on this one because I think Ralph brings up a good point. I, I think there is a sort of progress when you look at it from a defensive standpoint. But, you know, I, I think I think a lot of people can agree here. Bediso now officially 20 games in charge of this team, um, which is a lot. And we still don't know what the best side is. We still see him tinkering with this team and, you know, heading into this Copa America and the significant World Cup qualifiers that happened afterwards, it's not a good sign. So I just wanted your thoughts on what you saw from those two games. And <laughs> I know a lot can be improved on, but what should be improved on specifically heading into the games uh, against those teams in the Copa America? Oh, so much after these two games, just, just looking at Berizzo's calls, but looking at our head coach's um, decision-making. Uh, we talk, I talked about this before. I think that was going to be uh, so important going against these two big coaches th that, that Uruguay and, and Brazil had. And there was a lot of strategy behind it all. And we heard Berizzo uh, after the Uruguay game saying, oh, I was shocked but by the way that Uruguay played us, by the way their coach set up their team. And, and I was thinking to myself, you're really surprised by the way that the other team is showing up uh, or are you just thinking too much about what's in front of you and you're not thinking too much about what you can do? Because that's what, that's the feeling that I got in these two games that he was just too afraid of, of what he had in front of him. And, and actually thought that these were two very strong teams that you just couldn't go up against with your, with your more uh, offensive teams. So you, you chose uh, defensive players. You chose Robert Rojas. You chose Omar Alderete on the sides. You didn't choose Arsamandia. You didn't choose Espino like, like you were choosing lately. 
and trying to attack by the sides, like we said also on the preview episode, you chose defensive play. So you were going to get a defensive style a team and we got it. We got that. We got the best out of Omar Alderete, who had a lot of work uh, uh, during the game against uh, Uruguay. He also had a lot of work uh, during the game uh, uh, against Brazil. It was probably even harder for him uh, in the game against Brazil because he had to go against Gabriel uh, Jesus and Uruguay only had uh, Suarez up there and, and just players that were trying to surprise, but they weren't really the starters of this team. Uruguay came with a couple of of players missing. And uh, I think we didn't take advantage of that. I mean, just looking at the game, how it pl was playing out, I, I thought uh, uh, Paraguay in that second half, Berizzo could have come in stronger with his with his subs and could have tried to win the game. I, I thought we could have come with a win from Montevideo. And he just kind of settled for that tie, you know? And I didn't really like that because I was getting that message from the coach right before the game. I mean, just, Looking at the lineup, I was already getting that uh, mixed feeling. Just talking about the defense, and then we can talk about what happens in midfield. I mean, you got players that didn't make it 100%. We didn't get the best out of Bijasanti in these two games. Uh, I think everybody knows that. I mean, everybody that's seen Matias Bijasanti knows that this isn't the Matias Bijasanti 100%. We didn't get the best out of him, but he still tried to run everybody. I mean, being disorganized and and giving him so many so many tasks, which I think is the worst thing that that midfield has they're just disorganized I mean they don't work they don't work well together I think Gaston Jimenez is just not fitting in there he hasn't made any important passes in these two games I mean just just try to rewind and find a good play where he makes a pass that's just different a, a pass to Almiron a pass to Angel Romero you're not going to find it uh, Gaston Jimenez didn't do that he, he wasn't the conductor of, of this team the leader uh, when the when the pack needed to get out of the defense and I didn't see that and and obviously what are you going to ask for the rest of the team then what are you going to ask for Armiron when he's having to run people by the line what are you going to ask Angel Romero to do if he has to go against the, the whole defense of the other teams I mean it's impossible to criticize these these guys because they are just giving their hearts out to a team that's just not working out as a pack and I think Berizzo is totally responsible of what we saw in these two games the strategy behind it and how it ended uh, uh being uh, against Brazil. I mean, just pressuring Brazil in those first minutes of the game, that was crazy. Just giving them the whole field midfield so they can give you that law pass that they got for Gabriel Jesus and then beating you inside inside the box just because you didn't have enough players coming back. That midfield was all the way uh, uh, on the other side uh, pressuring up there. I mean, I, I didn't really get that strategy from Berizzo either. So I, I'm really worried from what I saw from that side, from the our coach, what he chose and how he uh, ended up showing it up in, in, in the pitch. I was waiting for something completely different from that midfield. I thought Berizzo had learned his lesson, lesson and I thought he was going to put a more defensive uh, uh, player in that midfield going against these two giants. I thought he was going to try to get that balance that we, we really didn't see. And I'm really let down by, by what I saw. It was, it was a really strange selection, especially against Brazil, on on the basis of what had happened in Uruguay. So in Uruguay, really, it kind of worked well. They played defensive, but they picked up the points and they're away from home. Um, and also, to, to Fede's point, Uruguay set up really defensively. You know, they played with three centre-backs and you kind of thought, so, you know, the, the game ended nil-nil maybe wasn't wasn't such a surprise in that respect. But, but from building on that, you thought, well, maybe we can go, you know, go with something a bit more offensive against Brazil and, and try and do something. And then he he played this very strange scene with Matias Villasanti played on the right-hand side. He's usually a, a central midfielder. And he was totally lost, like Fede says, in the first goal. He's kind of drawn to the left-back, Sandro, but Neymar's running in behind him. And, you know, that when that long pass goes over, then he's totally stranded. And, and I think Robert Rojas tries to come across to cut out, I think it was Richarlson, but on the cross, he totally misses it as well, going, he does that thing of going with your wrong foot, with your right, favoured right foot, but really you need to be clearing, you know, the other side of your body and, and the ball falls to Neymar, who's totally mm -hmm. unmarked and you can't, you can't really afford that. And with that, I think, you know, Paraguay are in big trouble. It was the first time they conceded in the first 30 minutes of these World Cup qualifiers. And it's actually the first time Brazil had scored in the first 15 minutes, because usually Brazil, what they do is they kind of, draw you in slowly, 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 and then they hit that diagonal long ball, which they like to do because they keep 
uh, Jesus and Richardson or whoever they're playing on the wing, sometimes it's Everton, they keep them really high up and just they kind of like lull you into a false sense of security and then and then Casemiro and people play those passes. Um, so that was, you know, it was a really bad start. Um, but let me pick up on a couple of, of positive points, I guess, because as we said, we can talk on a lot of, of things to improve. I thought Gustavo Gomez was really good in these two games. He had to do a lot of work. Paraguay playing defensively, the ball came back to them to him a lot. He had a couple of big challenges like interceptions against Brazil. That was important. He looked much more uh, relaxed, let's say. You know, there, we had some some issues where he was making lack of concentration errors or you know those misplaced passes. He looked he looked much better. Um, I thought Balbuena did very well next to him in the Uruguay game. Again, I was surprised Balbuena was dropped. Um, and then in that midfield, the one player that is kind of working for us is Angel Lucena. Lucena, is, he's been like doing that, you know, that hard work and those hard yards of running around, of covering, possibly because Gaston Jimenez and Villasanti aren't doing as well as they should be. But you feel that with, with Lucena, you have somebody you can rely on more in that midfield. Um, but there's definitely things to work on. I mean, I think with Gaston Jimenez, is the, he's the big enigma. And we had this problem before with a similar player in a way of Nesto Ortigosa when he was in Ramon Diaz's side. It was, Paraguay found it hard to use him to the, you know, to his best, uh, to his best kind of style. They found that, you know, they couldn't build a whole team around him and then they become a bit useless on the pitch because they're not very athletic players. They're not really going to like, you know, win the ball back very often or, or recuperate. They're positional players. Their positions are very good. But then you need all the other pieces around you. Um, so I think, you know, I think he's got to make a couple of hard decisions and it could be leaving out someone like Gaston Jimenez, who has started all six games in the World Cup qualifiers so far. So Berisa has trusted him to start and often plays 90 minutes. But it might be time if he's going to switch his system is to, to change that around. Absolutely. And Maria, I'll go to you on this one to, to close it out. I mean, looking at the Copa America ahead and obviously the opponents that we have in front of you, I, I think they're in robbing is a good point. I think you need to make those sacrifices because you have this team all together for a month and, you know, you have to find something that works. And I think this tournament, you know, the fact that they play so many games in such a short amount of time, I think that's where you really need to like find something that works because you like you had mentioned, Feather, like you had mentioned, Ralph, I mean, this side cannot, you know, be switched around. You got to find something that works. And, you know, people are, people get impatient, as you know, I you know, see on Twitter from family, friends, they get impatient when it comes to Barraway. Yeah, that's totally right. People are impatient. And, I, and, and from what we've seen, um, speaking about um, Gaston Jimenez um, and what Ralph said, you know, maybe it's time for him to be dropped. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of comments from people saying, you know, they're not happy with how he's pe been performing, especially um, against Brazil, which you would think, you know, he has such good knowledge about um, Brazil and plays with Brazilian players that he would be able to uh, lead in, 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 those, in, in that game. But um, yeah, um, besides that, I, I think... Um, uh, there was something a little unrelated, but a little um, that I noticed. Something that I noticed was their um, their lineup um, for for both these last two games versus Uruguay and versus Brazil. It's a very very defensive. Uh, it was very defensive. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I'm seeing here versus Uruguay was a four three three, and versus Brazil was a four three two. So you can tell that that Berizzo was going with that mindset that. We either need to draw or we need to draw. So um, you know, they I don't think he expected uh to to lose, but he had already that mentality that um let's just let's just draw, you know, like like he didn't have that winning mentality. But um it, it's something that he needs to change. Um players need to be switched around, uh sorry, not switched around, they need to find um a formula that works. And maybe a, a good idea would be to look at the games that, that they've done well in, um, the games that they've won, which I believe is only um, against uh, Venezuela, which is like one nil. Um, look at those games and see what worked then and, and, and see how he can uh, copy that system that he used um, in, in those games and possibly, you know, 
work something out because like you said, Roberto, we only have one month. Uh, we only have a few a few days to to train and and with this competition with with, with the Copa America it's going to be a lot more different it's going to be complicated they're going to be traveling back and forth um to Brazil to Paraguay so there's going to be a lot of time wasted where they could have been training and and fixing those problems that 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 it could you know it's critical for them to actually get that stuff together and 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 fi find something that works for them I, I just wanted to mention real quick before we get out of these two games, I was really worried about what I saw from our strikers. I mean, we're not getting uh, the best out of them. I mean, Almiron had several chances to score and he just couldn't do it. Uh, Angel Romero had one chance against Uruguay and he couldn't score. I'm, I'm really worried that our strikers, the players that are up there, uh, they're not really sweet with the goal right now. I mean, they need a lot of chances to score and... And the, the strikers that are hot, they're not in there. I mean, Gonzalez, he, he wasn't even considered for any of these two games. The, uh, Avalos, the, the new name, just 20 minutes out of him, 10 minutes on one game. And I think it was maybe he got 25, 30 minutes on the second game, uh, a little bit more. But we, he, we didn't see that much out of them. And I think Paraguay kind of needed that. And I, I'm actually worried also from what we saw from the free kicks. I mean, we don't have that. We, we we don't have that head that head play. We we don't have that head game. We don't we're not we're not we're not being strong up there. We don't have a player that's also uh, good just centering the ball, just throwing good good balls for the rest of the guys. Uh, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of lost in that in that place because that's Perisos' job also, you know, just to work those set pieces and to have those plays ready for these kind of matches where you're probably not going to have that many chances. But when you do have a free kick, you have to take you have to take your chance on it. And we we, we didn't see that. And then are the guys happy? I mean, are, are players really happy coming in this squad and not having any game time at all? Like Carlos Gonzalez, like Kaku Gamarra. Last time we saw Kaku Gamarra play against Bolivia, he came in great and he kind of even saved us on that second half. Fabian Balbuena, Rob just said it, he played an awesome game against Uruguay. Why then not even appear on the, on the second game? I mean, you, you even take out players that come in and are, and are a solution to the, to, the, to the team. Juan Escobar, a champion in, in Mexico, we didn't even see him in, in these two games. Richard Sanchez just a little bit on the first game. I mean, there are players that are asking for their spot and they're just not getting it also. Well, Fede, I, that's also something that I, I said about being – what the way that Berizzo has been thinking I feel like he's been thinking very defensively and he's not worried or focused about the the attacking side which is what we had criticized like you said earlier we had criticized about them not being too defensive now they're being too defensive and not too attacking yeah absolutely and that's that's the thing and now switching gears to what we're going to see in the Copa America and Ralph I'll go to you on this one because you know like you said and I, I think there has to be some sort of change chip. It's a different tournament. I understand World Cup qualifiers are completely different from a tournament like this, where let's face it, Paraguay are not in that tournament as favorites and that they're the contender, they're not Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Uruguay, those teams. Um, having said that though, I think they understand the responsibility of them to get out of the group. Looking at it, it's a tight group, like anyone would expect. First game against Bolivia off the bat, I think that's the game where at least for Berizzo's side, is that, okay, we need to show our real strength. We cannot play defensively because that is the game. If you're able to get results from there, and I understand that, yes, getting results is great and all, but it's the way that you perform that's going to show how good you are in this entire group. Yeah, there's, this is the, the best start they could have wished for is playing Bolivia outside of Bolivia because Paraguay is only lost once to Bolivia in the Copa America, but that was in Bolivia, in Cochabamba. So it was the year that Bolivia won the Copa America, where they used the altitude to help them. The last time they played Bolivia in the Copa America in Brazil, they won 7-0 because that was in 1949. Um, but, you know, this is a game that, that they would be expected to win. It's kind of must win. Historically, they've won. Their problem is that they're, of course, going into this game four games without a win. Bolivia's coming in also without many wins, but, but for them, a very surprising is they managed to get two draws away now back to back because they drew with Paraguay and then they've drawn just now with Chile away, which is very rare. And they have uh, Martins, 
who's playing really well, you know, uh, Marcelo Martins, uh, who's an all-time top scorer, he's playing very well. It's actually, this is, from what I can see, it's his best ever calendar year. He never scored four goals in a year for Bolivia before, and he's managed to get three in the World Cup qualifiers. He got one in a friendly. So he's kind of on form. So in a way, you know, okay, Paraguay's on this downward slope. Bolivia's a bit upwards. But this, it has to be a win. Paraguay have to win this game. And <clears throat> it's... Yeah, it's like you said, this is the perfect chance to, to try a couple of things and go more attacking. I mean, let's hope we see attacking fullbacks, probably Espinola and, and Arsamendia. Um, but, you know, let's let's see that and let's not play with, with four central defenders or, or, you know, four very defensive defenders. Let's, let's go for it. Let's, you know, let's try and play a bit more with, with two, two more forward-thinking players instead of, you know, you have... You have Almiron and and uh, he had Oscar Romero in the first game. They wanted them to keep dropping back into midfield. But, you know, maybe you can keep Ankel Romero up with an Avalos or a Charlie, Gos- uh, Charlie Gonzalez. So, yeah, this is, it. this is it. I mean, this is his perfect chance to go a bit more attacking and to experiment on the basis that he's, he's playing what is the, you know, the weakest team in the group first. Um, and then... Going into the other games, it gets much harder. But if you win this one, you, you're pretty much qualified because it's such a strange setup. There, just for people who maybe haven't followed this whole saga, I mean, the original idea was two groups of six and the top four go through. But the invited teams, when this got suspended with the pandemic last year, um, they they aren't coming. It's, I think it was Qatar and Australia. So now you have this weird system of, okay, it's two groups of five and the top four go through. So it's almost impossible not to go through. Um, but yeah, that gives them the freedom of pretty much one win should send you into the, the quarterfinals. Absolutely. And Fede, I'll go to you on this one. I mean, what do you want to see from this Paraguay side? I think Rob Fed mentioned it, that he wants to see more attacking. But in looking into the players, who do you feel would be the right choices to go, not just into this game against Bolivia, but I think it would make sense for this Paraguay side that they go into this tournament with the expectation that we need to improve our play. And improving their play would mean obviously getting good results and getting wins. Um, but I, I think they have to understand that they need to do this now. They need to do this now because not only does that paint a picture for what's going to happen for the entire tournament, but also what lies ahead for the more harder qualifiers for the remainder of the year. Yeah, I was just I was just looking back right now at that last time that we played against Bolivia back in November 2020 when we when we ended up tying them 2-2. It was, a, it was a really good game for them. They actually kind of surprised us with their strategy. They have a coach that really knows us very well. Farias, who has been able to maintain his job, it's not easy to be a Bolivian coach because this team usually loses a lot. And after those big losses, the coach is usually the one that uh, ends up going uh, and leaving. But Farias has managed because of the results that Ralph was, was talking about lately, he's been managing to, to stay there. So he's, I think he has a stable team. I think he's getting the best out of some players like Moreno. And obviously they are uh, uh, getting his style now and, and getting the best out of him. Uh, and that last match, I, I, I was just thinking, and we did play with Espinola on one side, but on the other side, we played with Alonso, I remember. And that midfield was Jimenez, Lucena, and Sanchez. And uh, up there was Oscar Romero, Sanabria, and Romero. That game, uh, Miguel Miron was not available, so we didn't see him in that game. Uh, I want to see if Berizzo is going to go back to his 4-3-3 formation because just that's his favorite formation, that we haven't seen that out of, out of him playing against these big teams lately, against Uruguay, against Argentina. We didn't see that against Brazil either, especially where that team sets up in the pitch. You know, it, usually we see it, we see it back there. We don't see them. We don't, we don't see our center backs close to the midfield. Uh, I, I, that's what I want to see. I want to see this team being installed in Bolivians. Uh, side of the pitch and I, I, I want to see the best out of this team uh, attacking and I want to see new names I think there's nothing to lose in this first game so you're gonna I think you can throw some surprises even at Bolivia I mean why not put uh, a, Jul- a Julian Ciso in there some not, not not starting but but maybe throw him in there in the game I mean put him in a game like this where the, where the kid can spark up and we, where he can make a difference uh, against probably one of the 
worst defense of, of the South American football. And, and then if he has a good game, then you know that he's available, that he's ready for the next games against Uruguay, against Chile, against Argentina, which are tougher teams. And when you're going to need the points, I, I do get the, what you guys are talking about, that you need to win against Bolivia. But I, I'm really not into it, this, this whole Copa America and getting the results and, and going to semifinals or, or, or even getting the trophy. I want to see a good team. And I want to see players that respond to their opportunities. And I want to see Berizzo making better calls on his decision-making. That's what I want to see in this Copa America uh, above all. And uh, that's what I'm hoping. I agree. And Maria, I'm sure you will agree on this as well. I think it's more than just results. Yeah, it would be nice to go far. Whatever happens in the knockout stage happens. But I think more importantly for this Copa America, it's strange. It, it really is weird because of the way that we're situated into all these games. I think we just want to see the team play better. I think more than anything, honestly. Yeah, you want to show your pride. You want to show your 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 garras, your your will to win. Um, you want to put up a good fight um, and show the people, show our country that you know we're worth it and that we can make it um, past, even if not in Copa America, actually make it to the World Cup that that we've been trying to do so for so long. And, and, and try to repeat that glorious 2010 team that we had. But yeah, it's just, we don't see that now. We don't, we don't see the, the, the wanting to win from them. We see them very, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't know how to, how to boring. put it into words. Boring, it's boring. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that, that's a good word. Say yeah, it, boring. you gotta say these kind yeah. of things. No, you gotta say it. <laughs> Fede, Fede, guys, come on. It, it's boring, we, we can't right. have that. And you know, I understand playing defensively in one end. It's understood, I completely get it. But, you know, when these type of games are happening, you gotta step it up. And Paraguay have always done that for years. And, and you know, with Berizzo's system, it's like, you, gotta, you guys would do something. You gotta do something. It's, yeah, it's not just a system though. We're mi- one player we really miss is you miss like that central midfielder that really just gets stuck in and can break up games and things. I mean, Via Santi does it to, to a point, but Via, it's not like, I don't know, like a Topo Caceres that we used to have who was just, you know, sat there cleaning everything up for the team. And that's why you could be more attacking and creative because you knew you had that. That protection and then what Paraguay's missed which they've missed for so long is the Chilava figure right the, the kind of the leader on the pitch that kind of gets everybody going um you know look at the again look at the the captain I mean you have the captain Gustavo Gomez but he's still very young he's still 27 28 and and it is a young team as well and you feel you don't have some of those those real leaders on the pitch maybe Angel Romero to, to a point but again it's like Angel Romero is not a physical presence right he's He's a very thin, skinny guy. So he stands up to Neymar, but it's, it's not quite the same as if you had Chilava like bearing down on you. So I think in a way they miss they miss a bit of that. Um, when And it's when those, you know, the chips are down and the team's not playing very well, like you guys say, it, it, then it becomes a bit boring because it's like, okay, who's going to spark the team into life here? And, and they may be missing that at the moment. Yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally uh, on key with with Rob, what Rob is saying. I, I think we don't have those leaders in there. I, I don't see players that really go up against the the, the opponent side, and I don't see them building up either when the refs uh, make mistakes. You know, I don't see them going up against them. And I do think that you you do have to show that side. I mean, the, the Paraguayan players are known for that. You know, not not just for being defensive strong, but uh, also being uh you know m- making those some show in, in every game and and i think we kind of lost that also we kind of lost the respect for, from other teams and we kind of need to get that back but i, I think the, the the style is colliding here with the players or berizzo is putting the style over the players i don't think that berizzo is picking the best players for his style either so I, I, I thought that Berizzo was already going to think about these during these seven months. It was seven months he had be, be, between the last game and this one. And he came back with the same thing and no other plan, no other ideas. That, that's where I'm really mixed up. But that's where I think that, you know, what has this coach been doing? I mean, he's not getting the job done. He's not getting the best out of the, his players. So why not you change it up? Why not you look into what you're doing and and try to do something different. 
it's a mix of everything. I think it's a mix of a lot of factors. And, you know, the fact that they don't have this kind of identity worries me and worries a lot of people that, you know, like you said, that kind of that respect is being lost. And I think after so long, it needs to be fixed. And I think there's no other way to, to go into like now viewing in the scope of America, maybe not with the expectation to go far or win or anything, but just like try to find something that works. Even if it's not pretty, even if they have to lose along the way, as long as they find something that does indeed work and think, okay, we can work on this heading into the qualifiers, then I'd be convinced. That's how I personally think. But I think obviously a lot of people would like to see more than just that. So obviously let's close it out here, guys. And my favorite segment, our predictions. So I think obviously many people will have to agree unless anyone has any any idea or any word in thinking that Paraguay will not get out of the group stage, say now or forever, hold your peace. I'm thinking that is no. Okay, perfect. Having said that, I'll go first in terms of predictions. I think Paraguay will go into this Copa America with a lot of... I want to say motivation because I think they understand that we need to, they need to do something and Berizzo will have to look at this tournament and say, okay, I need to get something that works. And I want, I view this as a perfect opportunity to go into this tournament and view them as, as a way to fix things and not, and to stay with that. Do not take, do not um, experiment too much, that kind of thing. Having said that, I think Paraguay do got another group. I am going to say that they will finish behind the likes of Argentina and Uruguay. That battle for third and fourth place will be difficult. Again, we shouldn't underestimate Bolivia. I think they're a really good side, but I just think for this type of tournament, I think they will see bottom. Having said that, it means the battle between Paraguay and Chile will be in that kind of discussion. I I personally think Paraguay are just a step better than Chile. I think they can get that result in the penultimate. I think it's the final game or something like that. So... I see them in third, so that means Chile goes fourth. I had made a bracket the other day saying that uh, I think if Paraguay are able to go at least to the quarterfinals, that would be fine. Um, I, I I would think or assume that they will have to play the likes of a Colombia or an Ecuador where they can push their distance. Um, I think they would – I personally would believe that they're going to play Ecuador. That's my prediction. And I would see them go to the semifinals and get eliminated by Brazil. And from there on, whatever happens in third, fourth place, so be it. But I think more than anything, more than predictions, I think we just want to see a style of play that is convincing that people can get all around. And hey, I mean, it's a tournament. I mean, we've, we've been to a Copa America final without having to win a single game. So who knows if, if uh, Lightning can strike twice again 10 years later. So that's my prediction. Par- Paraguay have drawn more games in the Copa America than any team in like history. So it wasn't just 2011. It's like like historically um yeah they, if they'll get to the quarterfinals and then it depends who they play because i feel maybe they'll end up coming fourth and then they probably have to play brazil and i can't see them getting past brazil but there is that thing of yeah once you get to the quarterfinal you never know right and you can push a game to penalties um so semi-final isn't crazy to think if they if they come up with an with an ecuador in the next in the or even colombia that colombia has got a really good team um, but they seem to blow quite hot and cold. They, they put in some really good performances, then some not so good ones. So you don't know, you know, what day you're going to meet them. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to go more realistically quarterfinals is, is kind of where it ends. Um, although I'd love, I'd love a semifinal as, as Roberto points out, but I think quarterfinals. Fede, what's your take? Fede, okay, want okay. to first? Yeah, but, yeah, I want, I, want, I want to hear okay. Maria's first. I want to hear Maria's. <laughs> uh, no, I think um, we're probably going to put up a, a, a fight and, and try to go on to the knockout stage, um, maybe possibly just barely getting there from what I see right now. Um, hopefully my, my prediction is wrong, and, and, and from, but from what I see so far, we're probably barely going to make it, but we will make it just at least to the quarterfinals. Not so sure about the semis, maybe not even sure about the finals, even though I saw earlier possibly win. But to be honest, to be uh, completely honest, I don't, I don't think they'll win, but <laughs> uh, that's my position. 
I knew you guys were going to be pessimistic. I knew you guys were going to be this way. I think only Roberto said uh, that you, he was, you were going to make it in the top three, top four teams. Okay. I say uh, fourth place. I say fourth place. You said fourth place. place. You said fourth, fourth place. place. Okay. Fourth that's, place. Not, that's not bad at all. Um, I'm going to go, you know, I'm actually think that we're going to get some surprises in this group stage, in this group particularly, because I'm not seeing the best out of Argentina. I'm not seeing the best out of Chile. I'm not seeing the best of the Uruguay in these last games. Okay, they didn't have Cabani. I mean, with Cabani and Suarez, it's a totally different game for them. Uh, I do think that with those two big game names up there, I do think they're going to get that first spot in this group, Uruguay. And then that second spot might be for us, uh, really. I do see us making it to that second spot. And then, you know, maybe Argentina, Chile, or Chile above Argentina. I, I do really think that Chile and Argentina could have some trouble in this group especially because Bolivia is coming in and they're going to mess up everybody and we're one of those teams that also we can mess up their lives um so uh said having said that I do think we're going to get a, another game out of the group stage and then it's just going to depend on who we go up against you know uh, uh I do see us maybe making it to the semifinals, but that's just it I, I think that's 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 enough for us in the, in this Copa America and I do think Obviously, we need to make the best out of this time, out of this, uh, uh, out of this concentration, out of this moment that the players are going to spend together, out of all these practicing days. I mean, I hope Berizzo makes the best out of that, and I do think that we can see alternatives, we can see different players. Uh, 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 I know what you're saying, Roberto. I know you want to see just one team. I know you want to see 11 players playing every game. I just think it's impossible for our pair of wines. I mean, just look what happened against Brazil. I mean, you had to change the whole midfield on that second half because you played them against Uruguay and there's just no way they're going to keep up that rhythm. So I do think you're going to have to change up the, the team because you're going to be playing almost every three or four days in this Copa America and you're going to have to travel. Paraguay is going to be here in Asuncion. They're going to stay in Uruguay just during two games. They're going to go and come back. So they are going to have to do that traveling around also. So I, I do think uh, Beris is going to be, have to be very smart about it and put players that are fit and not be too stubborn about his choices. Yes. And that's, I think, the hope for everyone here. I think certainly the, the idea is to find something that works to get the support from the fans. And, you know, especially during a, a really tough period for Paraguay, not just outside of sports, but just in, in general, need that kind of joy back. And this kind of joy happens in this sport, as we know, guys, and we talk about it all this time. Let's see. What, may, maybe we can just go with it with low expectations. I mean, obviously, getting into the group is great, whatever happens. But as long as we can get that style that works, then people will get on this team. Because I think there are people that want to, but just haven't been convinced enough. So I think it's it's this tournament that will prove otherwise. So yeah, again, again, I'm really excited for this tournament. I can't wait. All kicks off this Monday against Bolivia. Obviously, a lot of games happening this month. It's great to see Paraguay play more than at least six times in a, in a single month. I'm excited for it. I'm sure you guys are. And so I can't wait, honestly. So I guess this is a perfect way to close this episode for myself, Roberto Rojas. Maria Ritos, Ralph Hanna, and Fede Perez, thank you so much for listening to this special Copa America preview episode of Guarani Vision. See you soon.